What do you think is currently happening right now between Russia and Ukraine in the Black Sea? Russia with the Russia's struggle is not so much to occupy Ukraine, but to make Ukraine return to the Russian Empire's sphere, to the so-called Russian sphere, because no matter what Russia does, it cannot exclude Ukraine from their new empire ambitions. They must include Ukraine in it. So this struggle is for Ukraine to be included in this so-called Russian world. But Ukraine is a divided society itself. Part of it identifies with Russia, the other part identifies itself as Ukrainian. Can you mend this or can you bring these two sides together, especially now when there is so much contention? I think this problem is a bit exaggerated. Back in 2004, Ukraine adopted a course towards EU and NATO integration. And since then, the course hasn't been changed. It still continues in the same direction. Recent statistics show that about 72 or 73 percent of the Ukrainian population fully supports Ukraine's integration into the EU, and more than 50 percent supports the integration into NATO's security system. Therefore, I think our nation's movements towards EU and NATO integration is very much defined. There is a certain number of people who have a nostalgia for Soviet times or who would like to return to the Soviet system or something similar to that. And there is nothing unusual or extraordinary about that because every country has different parts of society who want to move in different directions. If it is so minor, then why has President Petro Poroshenko imposed martial law in some districts a martial law that you opposed and then he had to backtrack from 60 days to 30 days. What is at stake right now in this, uh, in this current situation? First of all, the conflict that happened days ago that led to martial law in Ukraine is a threat to eastern and southern parts of Ukraine. Parts that are closer to the Azov and Black Seas. Secondly, the way Russia behaved in the Kerch Strait with Ukrainian ships that were passing through the strait from the Black Sea to the Azov Sea disrupted the work and economy of Ukraine. Because many industrial organizations are dependent on those ships for bringing in their goods, this is why I think President Petro Poroshenko made the right decision. So you think the Ukrainian president has been right in the decisions and steps he has taken. What about Russia? You say Russia is to blame for what is happening, but the Russians don't see it that way. They see it as Ukraine first and foremost, but also the Western allies of Ukraine. They say they are responsible for the worsening situation in Crimea, in the Black Sea and in Ukraine. Russia thinks that the world is Russia has a different understanding of geography. It understands European borders and how the continents are located in the world. We all see it in a different way. But I want to emphasize this. Europe is divided in two, East and West. They are both different worlds with different world views, and the border passes somewhere in the Baltic and Black Seas. Right now, Russia is the greatest threat to Europe with its values. And what about the European response? Has it been adequate? in meeting this threat, this challenge posed by Russia? No, they are not adequate. That's why I believe that Europeans have great pessimism over them. Where are we headed if this situation isn't contained, isn't controlled, and how do you contain and control the situation peacefully by bringing Russia on board? Can you? For example, Turkey, and Russia are now working towards building the Turk Stream pipeline, which will essentially bypass Ukraine and energy supplies into Europe, which previously were via Ukraine. So Turkey seems to have found a way to work with Russia. You should remember that whoever you are, no matter the nationality, the first and foremost matter for you as a nation 
is the matter of security. Economics and other issues are secondary. The most important thing is to provide security for your nation. Secondly, you shouldn't play the role of a peacemaker by feeding a crocodile and hoping to be the last to be eaten by it. In all bilateral and multilateral relationships, security should always be the thing to consider. Today, whoever cooperates with Russia also supports their policies towards Ukraine. And I'm sorry for the line I draw here, but this is how it works in life.